technology side, um, I think we're going to do a slide change here if we haven't already. Um, just to give you some background on V Technologies, if you're not familiar with our company, um, we've been in business since '89, um, and all we really do here at V Technologies is integrated shipping. We've always focused on integrating to ERP and accounting packages. Um, we've been working with the Sage product line since the late '90s. Um, we are a Sage Bold developer, um, a strategic UPS ready provider, as well as certified with FedEx and Indicia carriers. Um, our flagship product, we actually have a couple products. Our flag, flagship product, which we're going to be showing today, is Starship. Um, we also have and develop a ship gear solution, which is a middleware piece that works between the carrier supplied systems like UPS World Ship, FedEx Ship Manager, um, and DSHIP Professional, um, and integrates that with Sage 100. Um, we here at VTech, we've actually made the APS switch and can't say enough about the savings that we've seen since we've made the switch. Um, not only from you know, a hard cost standpoint with the, the level three processing that we're able to attain with APS, but also from the efficiencies that we've been able to gain with the integration to our orders. So I'm going to pass it over to Patty so she can give you a little more information on APS. Thank you, Caroline, and, and thank you, Adrian. Um, everyone, good afternoon. We really appreciate that you're giving us this hour of your time. We know how extremely busy everyone can be. And um, I'd just like to tell you a little bit about American Payment Solutions. My name is Patty Benitez, and I am Channel Sales Executive. I basically work with the Sage Channel Partners. We do have a new team member, Trisha Hardigan, who will be focusing on partners in other ERP space in the other ERP space, uh, such as NetSuite, um, Acumatica, QuickBooks, etc., uh, we've been in business well over 10 years. We're headquartered in Mesa, Arizona, with partners, merchants, and sales representatives nationwide. We've been in business, as I mentioned, uh, well over a decade. Uh, David Ford, our CEO, was one of the founders of Sage Payment Solutions. He created American Payment Solutions about eight years ago and built the Sage 100 integration as of version 4.4. We have thousands of merchants nationwide, hundreds of ERP integrations and merchant accounts, and we have over 250 plus software and shopping cart integrations. Um, during today's presentation, we, we're going to be discussing how we can take advantage of Starship's shipping address validation, zip code validation, and how with that we can pre-qualify or help qualify, I should say, for level three processing, which basically offers you much lower rates coming from Visa and MasterCard. And with that, I'm going to go ahead and turn it back over to you, Caroline. Thanks, Patty. So um, this is just a little overview. We wanted to let you know um, and what to expect as far as the demo goes so you can uh, maybe understand a little bit before we start. Um, so what we're going to show you today is um, starting from entering a sales order and um, highlighting the Starship um, rate shopping from within sales order um, and that feature. And that's really going to allow you to quote freight up front so that you can then use those freight charges when you pre-off your order with APS. And then we're going to show you shipping the order that we've created, um, creating the invoice, and then Patty will show you the final um, APS transaction that will happen from a credit card processing standpoint. So uh, we don't want to go over into too much detail here. I'm going to really spend most of our time in the demo itself. So we'll um, flow you right into Sage sales order entry from here. Okay, hopefully you can see my screen. Okay, I'm going to bring up Sage. And like I said, I'm going to start in sales order entry. We're just going to create a sales order here. And I'm going to ship it to my best customer, ABF. Put a PO in here. Um, so this is going to be um, sent to the ship to address here, 3121 North 24th Street. And let's pick a couple of items that they are ordering from us. Now, once we're in sales order entry, this is um, a, a newer feature. It's probably been out for a couple of years now. But um, standard with the Starship um, license that you have, um, is the this rate quote function 
um, once you install it, it basically gives you access to the Starship reading engine from within sales order. So let me log in here. This does support multiple locations. Um, similar to you logging into the Starship client if you are a Starship user, um, except it's going to give your front office team um, access to uh, the server on the back end. So here um, you'll notice that uh, all the information is passed over. We have um, the sender address, which is the ABC um, distribution services. Um, the carrier and service have all been translated from the ship via. Here's my ship to that 3121 North. Um, if I click on this um, validation here, this is actually also using um, Starship's um, address validation to validate the address and to um, update that if necessary. Um, the other thing that the rate quote will do is it'll use the line items to auto pack if you have packaging scenarios defined inside of Starship. Packaging scenarios in Starship are basically um, case packs where you have one item that always ships in certain quantities. You can define that in Starship so that it can automatically be populated. Um, so in this case, we have those two items, and I have it set so that they are um, each quantity of one goes into this medium-sized box, which has these dimensions and freight class. So if I do a rate shop from here, um, the rate quote will go out to the Starship server and request all the rates um, for this particular shipment. And so you'll see I have, um, in this case, a combination of both UPS and post office coming back. And you'll also see here I have list, contract, as well as applied. So the list is going to be the published rate for this carrier. Contract is going to be my negotiated rate. And applied would be the, um, the rate that I have set to go back to this order. Um, you can, um, there's some definitions as far as settings to uh, if you only want your front office to see one, one of these columns here, you can set that so they only see applied or contract. So there are some options there. Um, but if I want to here, you'll see there is this, um, it translated from second day error on this order, um, which will get in Friday at 11. But I could also ship it actually UPS ground, get it there at the same time and save quite a bit of money. So I'm going to select UPS ground in this case. Um, and you'll see here on my charges summary that um, I'm, it's going to be 3004. So I'm basically updating this order with the published rate. So I'm going to apply this. And you'll see um, there's a little dialog here. You can have this either prompt you or not prompt you. There are some settings around this too. Um, and in this case, I'm going to define what that reverse translation is. So for this um, carrier UPS and the service UPS ground, um, I want that to update my ship via for this order to UPS ground. And once I've made this definition, it's actually going to automatically um, set that all the time. And so now you'll notice that if I go to this totals tabs here, that the freight charge has been updated with the amount. So Patty's going to take it from here and give you all the credit card details on it. Thank you, Caroline. Uh, so just imagine the amount of time that you're saving now with, with the rate quotes that you're getting from Starship. Uh, that makes it so much easier and seamless for us to continue now with accepting a credit card payment. Uh, one of the things I'd like to start speaking with you about before I actually process the transaction is a little bit about level three processing. Business to business and business to government purchases are increasingly being made via purchasing corporate and business cards. The interchange rates for these types of cards traditionally have been some of the highest in the world. And with that said, over the past several years, a new program has been created to help stimulate the American economy. Large corporations and government agencies have already began to take advantage of this program. And what I've noticed is that most smaller to mid-level companies are not utilizing the level three processing fees that are being offered by Visa and MasterCard. Corporate purchase card transactions are priced differently from consumer credit card transactions. Getting the best rate for corporate purchases requires additional line item detail on each transaction. Because so much additional data is required, most merchants accepting level three transactions integrate payment 
exemptions into their ERP system to eliminate manual entry of line item details. We at American Payment Solutions have already integrated our Level 3 gateway into Sage 100, which gives you um, Level 3 processing available and automated where you don't have to fill in the required fields, which typically are about 13 to 14 required fields from Visa and MasterCard. One of those fields is the ship to zip code. So I'll show you a little bit about those fields, but it has to do with item commodity code, um, zip, zip code and ship to zip code, et cetera. And this is where Starship comes in with their um, zip code validation for or shipping zip code validation, I should say. So Caroline has, has, has uh, gone ahead and processed the sales order for us, and I'm going to go ahead and pre-authorize it. Now you have the choice to either pre-authorize or go directly to a payment or a deposit transaction and just complete the transaction right from the sales order. Um, and you can set the default that you need. One of the items that American Payment Solutions added was the fact that once you process a credit card transaction, you're actually uh, able to set up an email address where you can auto-deliver the receipt once the transaction is processed. I'm going to go ahead and submit the card that was already set as a default, but you can also change the card or add a card on the fly. We created a modification that will allow you to turn the validation code requirements on or off. In my case, it is required, so I must enter the validation code. Notice how I'm referencing the sales order number and the amount has been pre-filled for me. Now, in the background, level three processing is, is happening as we speak. We're actually gathering the data that Visa and MasterCard require and we're placing it into the required field. We will also notify you if there's any issues with zip code and that we were able to validate it and then confirm that the CVV code is correct. From this point, then before we go back to uh, Caroline, I would just like to show you within the APS portal how this transaction looks so far. So I'm simply plugging into my portal and we're going to take a quick peek at how the transaction has been processed. And for that, all we have to do is go to Reports and choose the date. You can also preset uh, reports for auto delivery within the portal. And you can, uh, there's hundreds of ways that you could preset them in detail and summary. You, you basically decide. So this is the transaction that we just processed. Notice how it says pending capture. You're also provided a transaction ID which will reference the sales order number that we were working on. And when you click on the transaction ID, you're able to see details regarding the transaction. This transaction ID also follows within Sage 100. When you switch to, when you update and create the invoice, the transaction ID will also follow the invoice. And Caroline, I'm gonna go ahead and hand it back over to you. Thanks, Patty doesn't look like I have Starship running, so let me get that running here. Notice that this Starship login is exactly the same as what you saw in the rate quote. So everything is um, basically connecting to the same server on the back end so that um, both on from a sales order rating as well as a shipping perspective, you're seeing the same rates, would be, which would be the published and negotiated rates um, from the carriers directly. So we use their web, service, web services to connect directly so you get the most accurate rate. Um, while that's loading, let me just go back into here and make sure what this number is so that we know what to pull up. So we're going to be processing order 201 that Patty just pre -authed. I'm just going to accept that here, and then we're going to bring that into Starship to show you what it looks like from a shipping perspective. Um, also with the, um, with the rate quote now, um, since the rate the freight charges were pre off already. Um, in most cases, our customers will now want to set a freight rule to not write back the freight. Um, you can set that to never write it back, or you can set it to prompt you or to um, write back underneath cer certain conditions. So if you only wanted to write back based on um, pre off and you wanted to use a field inside of Sage 100 to define that, um, you could do something like that. I've set my freight quote to or freight rules to um, 
not write freight back in this case. So let's go in and process that order. 201. So this is the, the Starship ship screen. So this would be your shippers going, um, you know, getting the pick ticket and processing the, the shipment for these couple of um, drawers. And notice here that um, the, on the left hand pane is going to be a preview of the header level information on the shipment and the transportation that has been um, transferred from the ship via inside of this particular order is set to UPS ground. So the, that's from the fact that that rate shop had updated the ship via to UPS ground. So now the the client's going Starship client's going to read that in properly, so the shipper doesn't have to do anything additional to pick the right carrier in service. So really, all we're going to do is ship this guy, and I'm going to um, process the shipment. I'm not going to worry about rating it or anything because the shipper doesn't care. It's already been pre-rated, and the credit card has been pre-authorized for that amount. And Starship's going to connect with the carrier. Um, as well as create the invoice inside of Sage 100 and also provide um, the shipping labels for the two packages. So this particular label we call our smart label. It's an integrated shipping label plus packing list. This is typically printed on an 8.5 by 11 sheet with a little die cut here for the label. You can also print the shipping label and packing list both to thermal label printers if you'd like. And then in which case you would get two thermal labels for each package. So you would stick the shipping label on the outside and just put the packing list thermals on the inside. Here's my label for that second package that we shipped. That's pretty much all there is from a shipping perspective. So um, before I go back into Sage 100 and show you the invoice that was created and the information that was updated, I wanted to um, also show you the email notification. So Starship can use a combination of um, the carrier's email notifications as well as um, Starship's own email notifications. So um, if you use Starship's email notifications, you get a host of um, other additional features. Um, one being you can you know, um, have total control over the look and feel of the email. So in this case, um, I added um, a little logo here. I've added fields that are um, Sage 100 specific, so like PO number, which might be important to your customer. Um, and then they also get all the item and tracking level detail. So not only do they see the boxes that were shipped, they also can see the items. If you've defined the items in boxes, you can make it look like this. Um, you don't have to define this. If you don't define it, then you could put a maybe a list of tracking numbers and then a separate list of the items that were included in the shipment. Other things our customers like to do is send them back to their shopping carts, um, give maybe special promos within the email itself. So this would be the outbound email. Um, this email can go out as you ship um, versus at the end of day or at one specific time of day. Um, Starship can do a combination of our email notification as well as the carriers. So if you wanted to set an exception email, like UPS supports exceptions and notification emails, um, you could have the salesperson on the order emailed um, of any exceptions. So for some reason, the package isn't going to get there on time. Um, you can let your salesperson know so that they can be proactive about the customer service on it. OK, so let's go back into exit out of Starship here and go back into um, invoice data entry because I want to show you the invoice that was created as a result of that shipment. So I'm just going to click on the last button here to bring up that last and it's going to um, give me a little note that there has been a pre-auth transaction. So that was the transaction that Patty did earlier. And here's that sales order that we shipped, number 201. So Starship automatically created the invoice for this. Um, it also updated the tracking information here. So it gave you the carrier, the tracking numbers, weight. And in this case, there was no freight added because we have a freight rule that's set to um, not update the freight charges. So the total the freight amount still shows 30.04 here. 
So I'm going to send it back to Patty so she can finish up the credit card piece of this invoice. Thank you, Caroline. So imagine, this is perfect. You get the tracking information for your internal use and you're aware of where your package is going. At the same time, you have the rate, the freight amount already preset for you. Um, by the way, if there are any changes, if there's uh, anything that you uh, overlooked, you are able to change the freight amount at this point, even though the credit card has been pre-authorized. And speaking of pre-authorizations, American Payment Solutions offers a 30, that you hold a pre-authorization for 30 days. So you can go from 7 to 30 and you decide uh, how, how long you'd like this pre-authorization to be. Um, I'm going to go ahead and jump into the credit card tab and just finalize the transaction. At this point, it's, it's a very basic Sage functionality. I'm going to go ahead and print and then update. As we all know, the update process takes a minute. So um, I'm going to go ahead and tell you a little bit about what to expect with American Payment Solutions while we're updating. And um, since I know it's going to take a while, we're also going to be able to talk with Caroline a little bit more about how she feels about APS and how her processing um, has, has changed since the switch. Uh, one of the things I'd like to mention is that with American Payment Solutions, there are no module installation implementation or setup fees. It's all included as part of our services. There are no maintenance fees either. We provide data migration from uh, most ERP systems. Uh, just let us know what ERP system you have and we'll be happy to help. Um, we do not charge for, PC, for assistance with PCI compliance. We provide next day funding, which for some cases could be 12 hour funding. Uh, if you're located on the East Coast, for example, and you batch out by 8.45 p.m., you will have funds in your bank by 9 a.m. the next morning. I also explained a little bit about level three processing. This is one of the most important reasons many merchants switch over to American Payment Solutions. Simply by turning on level three processing, you are guaranteed to receive lower rates from, America, from uh, Visa and MasterCard. So keep that in mind. We'd be happy to provide you with a free analysis uh, of your current merchant uh, rates and um, you'll, you'll see immediately that we'll be able to provide you with the savings. We also provide 24-7 customer support. Um, and we have an A-plus rating with the Better Business Bureau. We guarantee our rates in writing for life. We have never increased the rates to any one of our merchants and don't plan to do either. Uh, there's an online management reporting functionality, which I'll go into as soon as we finalize the, the update. And the one thing I'd like to also mention is APS will pay the cancellation fees for most of our competitors. So if you're not happy with your current processor or if you simply want to compare rates and keep that processor on, on their toes, let us know and we'll be happy to provide you with the free merchant analysis. And not only that, but also um, we guarantee that we will beat or match any competitor's rates or we will pay you $500. So let's jump into the portal really quick and see what happened with our transaction. Notice how the transaction is approved, and you'll see the amounts are, are in the system for us and they're updated. You'll also notice that under the transaction IDs, you'll see the invoice now. So we did we had two invoices in the system, and we had them both update for us. And if you click on the transaction ID, Again, you'll be able to see all of the information relevant to this particular transaction, and now it will reference the Sage invoice number. I'm going to jump right into Sage customer maintenance and just show you how this transaction looks within Sage 100 and how you could reference the transaction ID number from the portal right within Sage 100. So our favorite customer is ABS. Here is our invoices, and I believe it was 135 and 136. We can go into either one. And now in the credit card area within customer AR invoice history inquiry, 
you'll see that the transaction ID from our portal will be populated in the tra transaction ID field within Sage 100 credit card information. Very well, so this is how you have a seamless integration where you're able to use Starship along with credit card processing from American Payment Solutions and you don't even feel like you stepped out of Sage 100 at all. Uh, Caroline, is there anything that you would like to add? I don't think so, Patty. I think you covered it. <laughs> well, Adrian. right now, yeah, Adrian would be a good time if you have any questions. I'm going to pass okay, it back to right. Adrian. She's going to go over um, any Q and A um, that we've received from along the way. Perfect. So while Adrian is uh, getting back, getting the questions sorry, ready. Guys, sorry, you guys. Oh, <laughs> That's okay. <laughs> I'm here. I was trying to do everything from the other computer, but I wasn't able to unmute myself from over there. So I apologize. I'm here, and I would like to launch our first poll. And, uh, oh, Caroline, are you taking back control from me? Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to go ahead and make myself presenter here. Show my screen so everybody can see the contact information. Um, I'm going to launch our first poll, and I just want to remind the audience that if you do have any questions, please go ahead and click on that question mark button next to your name on the webinar pane, and I will announce your questions for both Patty and Caroline. If you could just take a moment, are you interested in learning more about credit card processing? If you could take a second just to answer that. Uh, question and that will um, indicate to Patty that she should follow up with you on the phone and talk with you a little bit more. And let's look over at the questions here. Any cost for the 24 by 7 customer support? Are the costs per case? Thank you, Ken. Um, as far as American Payment Solutions, if that question was for me, no. There, there is no cost whatsoever. You receive support uh, 24-7, 365 days a year. And the one thing I'd like to mention is we do not use an automated service, so you will always have a live person on the phone, whether it's 3 in the morning or 3 in the afternoon. And uh, the account representative that initially starts working on your merchant's account remains your representative for the life of the account, and you will always have access to them as well. Hey, Ken. It's Caroline. Thanks for the question. Um, on the Starship side, um, we also have <laughs> live reps that you'd be calling into. However, um, our reps aren't here 24-7 unless you have a special contract with us, which we do offer to some of our customers that have that requirement. Um, so we have support that's available either by case or annual plans. Um, so you have options there. Our support services also offers um, consulting services for one-on-one -on -one appointments um, specific to any question or anything you wanted to go over on the Starship side. And it looks like we have 58% of the audience voted for this uh, poll. If we could uh, just ask the audience to take a moment. The rest of you out there, if you can, take a second just to answer this. That would be great. Um, and we have quite a few other questions. If level three depends on ship to zip code, and we have a number of customers that order from Central, but ship to several satellites on main credit card, does that jeopardize level three rates? Thank you, Hal. I'm not sure if Bryce has joined the call yet, but um, Adrian, if you're able to see if Bryce is available, um, I, I can answer the, call, the uh, question, but uh, it's not going to be a complete answer. I know for a fact that we pull data from Sage 100, and we make sure that we populate all of the required fields from Visa and MasterCard, as long as that information is available within Sage 100. Uh, however, uh, if you do run into a situation where uh, there's information missing, our system will notify you that the information is being required uh, because the transaction will not be uh, completed through level 3 processing. So 
I know that there's more to this answer than what I'm giving you. Uh, so if you wouldn't mind, I'd love to just take the, uh, the question and maybe try to get one of our experts to answer it after the presentation. And Patty, the uh, question will be aligned to Hal's name so that you can okay. uh, go ahead and reach out to him and, and elaborate. And then we have another question from Ken. Thank you, Ken. Uh, is APS installed to Sage 100 Library Master? It is. And you'll, you'll see it. it. Literally, the installation takes about 30 minutes. Um, there's no downtime, maybe one or two minutes of downtime, if any. And yes, it is installed in the Library Master uh, within Sage 100. And under company maintenance, it's very uh, similar to how Sage Payment Solutions is being installed currently. And Ken, I installed it on my VM, so if I can do it, I know you can do it. <laughs> and then he also says, is it also installed in AR or both? So there are, yes, Ken, and thank you. These are great questions. Uh, it, it's installed in Library Master, and you're able to process transactions through sales order and accounts receivable, which is what I think um, you, you wanted to know if there was a possibility to, to process. So you're able to process through sales order entry, sales order invoice data entry, sales order shipping data entry, and then you're also able to process within accounts receivable cash receipts. And I'm not seeing any more questions yet, but if you do have a question, please uh, click on that question mark button and indicate your question in the text dialog box that opens up. I see 79% of you have voted. I'm going to close out this poll and I'm going to share another poll. If you could take a moment to answer this poll, are you interested in learning more about shipping automation? If you could just take a second and then this will uh, notify Caroline that you are looking for a follow-up phone call to learn a little bit more about how Starship can help automate your processes. And, and if we have any customers out there, that current Starship customers that are interested in learning more about the rate shop function that you saw today, um, you know, definitely um, click yes there and or write a comment in your question pane so that we can make sure you get all your questions answered about that. Um, that's available, as I said, mentioned earlier, um, free of charge as part of the um, maintenance program. Um, so if you're up to date on the latest version, you can just get the install links and install it um, and have access to it right away. And Caroline, this might be a good opportunity, too, to talk about the difference between ShipGear and Starship because some Sage 100 customers might be running ShipGear, right? So um, they might... Uh, be interested in learning a little bit more about how Starship can uh, Starship has you know more options for rate shopping and yeah. things of that nature. Yeah, definitely. Thanks, Adrian. Um, Starship is pretty much our full-blown shipping solution. Um, so you will have multi-carrier functionality um, within Parcel as well as Freight. Um, you can do things like Adrian mentioned, rate shop. So you'll be able to rate shop all of your carriers in one click, and you can rate shop across the mode. So if you had uh, maybe a UPS 100 weight shipment and you thought, eh, maybe if I went LTL, it might be a little less expensive, you'd be able to see all of those from the, the rate shop screen, either in um, sales order entry or from within the Starship client if your shipping guys are, are doing the rate shopping. Um, and then um, along with the, the rate shop, we also have something called Ship Via Rules. So if, you're, um, if you want to automatically select the best carrier and service combination based on maybe um, delivery date and time, uh, you'll, you notice that when I went through it in sales, uh, to the sales order rate shop, I, I did that manually. But when you're going through the Starship client, there should be a rule that allow you to do that in a more automated fashion so that you don't actually have to select it um, you know, manually. And then, um, you know, item level information, uh, you notice that we use that both in the sales order rate shop to determine packaging. Um, in the, the actual shipping side of things, we use line items to help automate international documents like commercial invoice, shippers letter of instructions, SEDs, anything that has commodity level detail on it. Um, and then also on the LTL side with the BOL documents. So we bring as much line item information over as we can from your um, source document 
and then we fold in all the other details, shipping related details that may not be in Sage so that there is minimal data entry there. Um, and there's a whole host of other things that are different between the two solutions. So um, if you're interested in learning more, definitely um, make a comment in your question pane. Thanks. And we have 69% of you have voted. Uh, it would be great to get a few more votes before we um, shut it down. But we really appreciate you guys spending time with us today. Looks like we're ending in 20 minutes before the hour, unless we get some more questions in here. Really um, quick, let's go. <laughs> <laughs> bring, bring on the questions. I do have a little bit of information in case anybody is interested in uh, a free merchant analysis. Um, keep in mind, it, it, no strings attached, no commitment from you whatsoever. If you would like to learn more about how to reduce your rates through Level 3 processing, feel free to contact us and all we need from you are your most current merchant statements. Um, we would settle for one but we typically request at least three. That gives us a better idea of what your current processor is charging and we can uh, pinpoint exactly where they are, um, where the, the rates are increasing or decreasing and where the fees are and explain to you exactly where those fees are coming from and who they're going to. So if you'd like to learn more about that, please feel free to send us the merchant, your merchant statement. And I just want to repeat, if we can't beat or match your current processor's rates, we will pay you $500. Uh, no questions asked. All we need to do is see the merchant statement. I'm sure that's quite eye-opening when you look at that, all the different areas that you have fees with credit card processing. We learned a lot over at VTech. <laughs> <laughs> so I don't see any other questions. Thank you, everybody, for uh, spending time with us. I'm going to close out this poll. I'm going to flash up the contact information again. Um, here's Caroline's contact information and Patty's contact information. Please reach out to them should you have any questions. And uh, we definitely will be following up with you with the recording and an email with their contact information as well. Thanks, Patty and Caroline. Excellent presentation. Thanks, ladies. Thanks, right, everyone. Everybody. Take care. Have a great day. You too. Bye-bye. All right. Bye-bye.